recently, I made this tutorial on how to create a 3D icon in DaVinci Resolve. And it was under a minute, so I've gotten a lot of comments asking me to, you know, explain a bit more because I went through everything really fast. So this is the node graph that I had in my tutorial. So let's recreate this. After we have our little logo here, you can import any image you want. Um, this includes like clips and videos. What we're gonna do is press shift space and get in an image plane 3D, connect this logo into the image plane 3D. This will basically make this image into a 3D object that you can use in a 3D environment. Okay, so you'll be able to like move it in 3D space and what whatnot. So if we just drag this image plane 3D to the viewer and hold alt and hold the scroll button, we can see it is in 3D space now and we can move it wherever we want. Um, maybe we can rotate it, make it bigger or smaller in 3D space. I'm just gonna leave it as is. So if we press shift space and add a duplicate 3D node and then connect this image plane to the duplicate 3D, um, just like that, and then drag this duplicate 3D to the viewer. If we increase the copies to, let's say, I don't know, 100, this will basically give us our 3D effect. So go to the Z offset and then just type in 0.01. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty good. So if you see that 0.01, this is 100 copies in this section here. And you can see it's having like a little bit of a 3D effect to it because there's just so many copies. And you can like, you can see if I just edit this um, setting a little bit more, you can see every single copy <laughs> that comes out. And then after that, we just have our merge 3D, which is basically the 3D environment. So press shift space, add your merge 3D, connect this duplicate 3D to the merge 3D. And this merge 3D will act as the 3D environment to the scene. So an actual 3D environment where you can add a bunch of other things to it. So for example, without the merge 3D, you only have this logo here. You can't add anything to the scene. Like you can't add like another logo to the scene or anything else. But with this merge 3D, this merges multiple things together. So if we copy this over here and then we connect this duplicate 3D to the merge, we can move this and we can have two copies. Where, where is it? Make sure you have the merge 3D, drag the merge 3D to the viewer, and you can see you have two copies now. So basically what the merge is doing is merging both of these 3D scenes together into one 3D scene. So that's how the merge 3D works. What we want to do with this merge 3D is press shift space, add a camera 3D, connect this camera 3D to the merge, and then add a render 3D and then connect this merge to the render 3D. What this render 3D will do is take this 3D scene and convert it into a 2D output. And then it will do that using this camera. If we just disable this duplicate 3D, because I think it's lagging my computer. Go to the camera 3D, increase the Z position. We can see that, you know, the camera is doing its job. We can see this um, DaVinci Resolve logo here. And what we can do here is make sure you connect this render 3D to the media out so we can see it in the edit page afterwards. But what you want to do after, if you want to animate this 3D logo, if we just uh, rotate a little bit, I think it's rendering the software. I think I know why it's lagging so much. Basically, if we go to the render 3D, it's using my CPU right now because it's using software render. Just go to software render, press hardware, and it should use your GPU, which is probably faster than your CPU. Make sure do not change any of the properties from the image plane 3D, except maybe if you wanted to have a little bit more performance, you can change subdivisions to be one, which means that it'll just have like less triangles, less like polygons. If you if you know Blender, you know what I'm talking about. But do not change any of these settings. How to actually change the settings of the logo, press shift space and add a transform 3D. Uh, if we hold shift and slot it in, this is going to let us transform this however you want so we can see it's moving it quite nicely it is a lot of duplicates though oh my gosh let's make this duplicate like 20 then let's make this 20 and then make this z offset um just a little bit higher maybe 0 0.05 and now if we go to the transform 3d and move it yeah that looks much better uh it's like much more performant you you will be able to see if you go here you will be able to see this but how to fix that is just go to the render 3d go to z buffer transparency z buffer fast change that to quick sort and okay it doesn't fix it here but it makes it better so now that we have this transform 3d what we could do is animate it so let's just turn on the animation for every single one of these and then go to the end of the timeline here and then just do whatever you want I'm gonna make it look amazing. Let's move it out at least. So boom, maybe down here, yeah? Amazing. Truly just a work of art I just made. And now to ease these keyframes out, just go to the spline tab, select everything by just selecting this first one, control F, control A, and then press S, 
and then press T to edit the keyframes here. So I'm just gonna make maybe like 20 for the ease in, which is the this part. And then maybe 70 for the ease out, just to make it a little slow. And so it's like a little, you know, DaVinci Resolve is going away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. This is an amazing animation I've just made. Hey, that looks so sick though. That looks perfect. That was the in-depth tutorial, you know, to explain it for all the people who didn't get it, which probably everyone didn't get it because it was only one minute and I had to go through it very, very fast. But Ristol, out.